This video is brought to you by Anchor. Since the event, I have been nonstop thinking about iPadOS. I even installed the developer beta, although I won't be doing a live demo until it's less buggy when the public beta comes out. Uh, but yeah, I've just been lost in thought thinking about what this update means. I've been discussing this with my good friends on the platform, Chris Lawley, Canoopsy, Byte Review, and more. And um, yeah, I'm here to tell you, iPadOS 16 isn't exactly perfect. It doesn't check every box of mine or yours, and it does leave a few people out. However, it is a really exciting step in the right direction, and it really does sort of predict the future of the iPad, or really more so guarantees a future for the iPad Pro that we may have not seen before. But before we dive deep into analysis here, I wanna quickly summarize all of the notable features that I saw with iPadOS 16 that stuck out to me specifically and probably others as well. Number one, the iOS 16 tweaks and improvements to the lock screen, the messages stuff, the collaboration stuff, and also even the weather app, I'll roll that in here. It's nice to see, but it doesn't fundamentally change the iPad as a product. Uh, number two, we have improvements to the files app and spotlight search, so now we have like navigation buttons, we can change file extensions, and the spotlight search is just more rich rich or thorough. Nice to see that. That is definitely a bigger deal, but still like, you know, just a minor improvement. We've had files in Spotlight for a minute. Uh, number three is the freeform experience. That is the virtual whiteboard space you can toggle in FaceTime that Apple demoed. It's not available till the fall, but I'm very excited to put that to use with school people, like classmates, whatever, school people, and uh, all the creative people in my life when we're ideating stuff. Um, and then the last couple features are really important. Uh, display scaling, which allows you to make the UI smaller so you can see more. It's sort of a similar experience to what you get in a Mac when you choose more space in the display settings and system preferences. This is an M1 exclusive feature, and by the way, I will kind of touch on the M1 exclusive uh, controversy later in this video, so stay tuned for that. Um, but then there's Stage Manager, and that's a huge, huge feature, and it's not perfect. It's not quite what we expected. It's not like a Mac OS-like experience. It's very distinctly iPad. But again, it really differentiates the iPad now from you know other iPads and also just iOS in general, and also the Mac. You know, it brings it closer, but yet creates its own very interesting, unique experience, especially with external display support. And then we also have Memory Swap, which has been an M1 or Apple Silicon Mac exclusive feature, which is very important for just performance and running apps. And speaking of apps, then we have desktop class apps coming. It's very vague language, although there is an explanation to it and it does seem promising. Okay, first up, let's talk about Stage Manager and why this feature or concept really is so important. And yes, it's in its early stages of development. It is subject to change until the fall and onward because Apple's always trying to, you know, better iPadOS with each and every upgrade. They take things out, they put things in, I digress. Um, the fact that your iPad is no longer sort of locked in its own chassis is huge. I mean, the iPadOS experience really has been limited to the iPadOS form factor screen. Even if you can mirror, it's still locked into that four by three-ish aspect ratio. You know, you're stuck. You're stuck in the confines of this. Now you're not. Now when you connect your iPad to a USB-C display, you have a whole extra UI to play with. You know, sort of Mac-like, but distinctly iPad. And it allows you to interact with a multiple array of apps very quickly, sort of layered on top of each other or next to each other or full screen if you want in some cases. Um, but yeah, it's really, really cool. This is something that has been keeping me from using the iPad Pro more often because if I wanna come home and sit down and do a lot of work, I don't necessarily always want to be on my iPad on the couch or just on a, at a table, just sort of staring at this display or a mirrored version of it. I want to look up at a display, like the studio display that I have back here connected to my MacBook, and go to town, use full screen apps, even if they're not necessarily Mac apps. You know, I'd like to be able to just see things bigger and have more screen real estate. And now that is exactly what you have. It's by no means Mac OS, but that's fine. You're buying an iPad. But the fact that you have that sort of experience, sort of like Dex is to the Tab S8 and whatever, and also Samsung phones, impressively enough, I'll give them that. Um, this makes this product a lot more versatile. And if you wanna buy it as a standalone thing, now you have more incentive to do so. And if you really enjoy the iPad like I do, that's really exciting. But there's one major issue with this feature. If your iPad does not have an M1 chip, 
you simply cannot use this. And I thought that was a bit harsh at first, and you have every right to be upset if you bought an iPad Pro 2020 model. You know, knowing Apple, knowing their history of supporting old devices, you would expect, you know, to get the most out of all your updates for several years. But there is an explanation to this seemingly very unfair decision on their part. But before I explain why Stage Manager is an M1 exclusive feature, I have a brief message from the people that made today's video possible. Once again, this video is brought to you by Anchor and their amazing tech accessories. If you're all in on using the iPad Pro or iPad Air, you definitely gotta check out their stand hub. The tilt and height adjustable arm offers an insane variety of angles or positions to use your iPad Pro in, whether you're typing, watching, or drawing with the Apple Pencil. The stand also packs a plethora of ports like a 4K 60Hz capable HDMI port, SD and micro SD card readers, as well as a headphone jack and USB-A ports, all while charging your iPad Pro at up to 100 watts if plugged in. It also folds up quite nicely for usage on the go, but if you need something even more portable, you should definitely check out their 6-in-1 USB-C hub. It's compact and fits snug on the port side of your iPad, and more importantly, it offers almost all the ports the stand hub does, so you can get the most out of your tablet and peripherals or accessories on the go. I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested. So why is Stage Manager an M1 exclusive feature? Is Apple being simply money hungry and trying to get you to buy the M1 iPad Pro, or is there a hardware reason? Well, I think it's both. I think that Apple is trying to give you a reason to buy an M1 and up iPad Pro because for the past year, nobody has known what to do with the M1 processor. I mean, sure, people like Christopher Lawley using LumaFusion and other applications night and day could tell that there was a performance jump, but for the most part, your experience really wasn't that different, you know, 2018 to 2020 to 2021. It was the same iPad OS experience just with some extra horsepower, but now this feature apparently takes advantage of this chip and it makes sense. Let's do a quick spec comparison between the 2018, 2020, and 2021 iPads. I did this in a whole comparison last year, um, but I'll reiterate what I've said. iPad Pro 2018 and 2020 are essentially the same. They have the same processor pretty much with the exception of a letter being different and a GPU core being unlocked or not disabled in manufacturing. Also too, there's a camera module on the 2020 iPad Pro that's more advanced than the 2018 model. Other than that, they're the same. They have the same now four-year-old processor architecture and pretty much the same you know, uh, performance with the A12X slash Z processor. It has half the multi-core performance of the M1 and also half the memory. The iPad Pro 2018 models, most of them had four gigabytes of RAM with the exception of the one terabyte one having six gigs. And I believe most of the 2020 models have six gigs of RAM, but the M1 models have a minimum of eight and a maximum of 16 gigs of RAM, a huge difference on top of the increased horsepower, a lot more horsepower for that matter. So it really doesn't make sense for Apple to bring this really intensive experience, and I'll explain why in a minute, to an iPad with four-year-old processor architecture. It's unfortunate that they rebranded the 2020 iPad Pro as a new iPad, but that's just what they did, and this is why this whole thing is kind of unprecedented and unfair. But I will say, in the past, if I haven't already said this, Apple's been very fair about bringing old features to old iPads. I mean, hell, the A8X in the iPad Air 2, which was announced in late, I believe, 2014, wasn't like supported up until like last year. Crazy stuff. So this probably wasn't an easy decision for them to make. And I think it comes down to the amount of memory. I mean, sure, the A12X and Z are powerful, but I don't believe they have enough memory to accommodate switching between multiple apps like really quickly. Like with split screen, you had two experiences, maybe three in like a window. So that was manageable with like four to six gigs of RAM. But now if you have like multiple apps, like four in the background, three layered on top of each other with others like ready to go, you need more, you know, random access memory for that. And the iPad Pro, the previous versions do not have that capability or have that available. But do I think Apple could have brought Stage Manager to older iPad Pro models? Yes, but I don't think it would have been a good experience and Apple is all about having the best experience for its users. Otherwise they don't you know, allow you to run particular software on their devices. So they were faced with probably 
bring the feature to the 2018, 2020, and 2021 iPads, but have some users experiencing lag or an inability to keep apps open, which is the whole point of Stage Manager, or to not include it at all and face the backlash there. And I think that this outcome is better for them. It's not, it's not you know, a good look, I would say. I, I'm not happy about this myself. I wish more people could experience this you know, experience, really. You know, Stage Manager is such a huge deal. But it does make sense from a business standpoint, unfortunately, but more so from a hardware standpoint as well. Another software feature or detail that makes this whole controversy make more sense is the ability for iPadOS to use iPad Pro's internal storage as memory with M1 models specifically or exclusively. But the thing is, this was an M1 Mac exclusive feature. So it really wasn't able to be done, I guess, beforehand, obviously with Intel chips or you know previous Apple Silicon chips and iPads. So, you know, this feature allows you to take advantage of even more memory on top of the already more memory that exists in M1 models, 8 to 16 gigs, plus, you know, this virtual memory um, from your storage. So now you can keep even more apps open, which makes sense if you want to, you know, toggle from them really quickly. That's the whole point of Stage Manager. Um, so that makes sense as to why this is an M1 exclusive feature. Once again, you just have way more memory to work with. And not only that, this is great news because if you're someone like me doing video editing or some people doing AutoCAD or just anything intensive, your application will greatly benefit from extra memory. So this is making the iPad Pro even more capable um, of a device. And then this also leads into the future of iPad Pro because we can only guess that the next processor inside of it is gonna be the M2, which now has more memory um, available up to 24 gigs. So I assume a one terabyte or two terabyte iPad Pro will have 16 or 24 gigs of RAM and memory swap and the, I think, like 18%, you know, processor speed advantage over the M1 and the better, you know, media encoder and the better GPU. So it's becoming such a capable device. And this also leads into desktop class apps. This was kind of a vague thing to say and Apple's marketing is always kind of just fluffy, but they wouldn't say this if they didn't mean it. Sure, we don't have, you know, pro apps to show for right now. Nothing from Adobe, really, I would say. I mean, there's some apps that are, you know, pretty capable, but nothing like Mac apps yet. Apple is introducing APIs, frameworks, and just under the hood things for developers to use to, I think, port over, you know, what would be Mac apps to the iPad experience, maybe even the stage manager experience. So they're laying the groundwork for apps like Final Cut. I mean, let's think about it. We have Memory Swap, which is definitely a great feature on the Mac. We have a better you know, processor with a media encoder that's probably coming to the iPad Pro. And we have Stage Manager, which allows you to open things full screen and use an external display. Perhaps this is why Final Cut or apps like it will work now that this groundwork has been laid. This is why I'm saying, is this update perfect? No but it is a shift to where we're seeing like, oh, this is Apple's plan for the iPad Pro. So, you know, I've been impatient. I have been, you know, just singing my woes of, oh, there's no, you know, Final Cut Pro, but they weren't ready for this last year. They weren't ready coming out of COVID and iPad OS 15, apparently, according to my buddy, Chris Lolly, laid the groundwork for a lot of this. So, you know, it's just been a matter of waiting and just hoping that Apple cares about the iPad and clearly they do. Again, not that this is a perfect update, not that everybody's happy, but yeah, um, you know, with all of this, you know, hardware and software, you know, optimization for Apple Silicon, you know, Mac chips. Yeah, I mean, it's making the iPad Pro seem a lot more promising and I'm super excited. So while this update leaves a lot of iPad users in the dust, for those of us who have purchased M1 iPad Pros or who plan on upgrading to one, or better yet, an M2 iPad Pro when it comes out, all the features introduced, specifically memory swap, desktop class apps, and stage manager, point towards a really exciting future for the iPad Pro. Some of us were losing hope. I mean, last year, I remember specifically saying, like, I don't know how Apple is going to take advantage or optimize, you know, the experience for the M1. Uh, and they are, they're starting to. And of course, you know, I wanted more. I wanted Final Cut as a biased YouTuber, but we've yet to see more coming. So all of these things are sort of hints at a bigger and brighter future for iPads. So we just have to be patient. Of course, that's just sort of what we've come to expect with Apple. They're very very slow to change and implement, but when they do, it's really well done. And even though the developer beta one of iPadOS 16 is 
pretty buggy and rough, which is why I didn't want to demo it because things have still yet to change. It's still really cool to see, you know, the iPad Pro projecting a full screen experience on my studio display. And by the way, um, that does work with other displays as well. I'll talk more about that in the future, but yeah, I'm super excited. iPad Pro has been rejuvenated and I'm excited that iPad Air is also included in that with the M1 chip that it now has. So yeah, um, I'm really happy that um, iPad does have once again a future to look forward to. I wasn't quite sure last year, but you know, I guess I trusted the process and just waited until Apple had something bigger and better. And iPad OS 16, imperfect as it is, is exactly that. So stay tuned for more content or coverage from me talking about iPad OS 16. Also stay tuned for some coverage of the M2 MacBook Air. I'm really gonna try to get my hands on that because that device looks absolutely fabulous. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you wanna see more stuff like this, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, whatever you want. Check out my link to Anchor once again, if you're interested. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in whatever I post next.